Frank, great to see you again. You know, last time we were talking about we were with Nord Precious Metals. Today we're going to talk about Kaniagas Battery Metals, which is an interesting company all on its own, Frank. Tell me a little bit about the history of the company first. Well, the company itself is actually a spin-out from one of my other companies. It's a spin-out that we had a, a, a property in Nord. Uh, we spent about $6 million on it. Did about 17,000 meters of drilling. It's a former property drilled by Soquen, which is actually a government, a Quebec government a geological group. Uh, we feel there's something significant there. We found some very significant results. So hopefully that does become a meaningful deposit in Quebec and we can actually uh, uh, develop it and produce battery metals. So it's basically a nickel, copper, uh, cobalt. We have some platinum group elements. Uh, it's very large. Our strike length is about six kilometers. We only did shallow drilling and what our target to do some deep drilling. And the area is known for these extremely high grades at depth. Okay. But the, the news you've had of late seems to focus on what I call or you call your feed first strategy. What is that strategy? What we're trying to do here, Pat, uh, you know, they're building all these battery plants in Ontario and Quebec. They have no feed. They, no, they have no feed to build the batteries, is my understanding. So what we're trying to do is actually, uh, we call it feed first. We've been offered a lot of feed, and a lot of it's offshore. You know, it was surprising how much we were offered actually out of the DRC. And uh, a lot of the feed that's coming to us from the DRC is from the informals. And a lot of this stuff, for example, we're offered 29 million tons of uh, very high-grade copper uh, cobalt material. And we said, where did you guys get this from? He said, oh, this is all hand hand cob material. And this is the low grade. And I think, you got to be kidding. You know, like some of the stuff like 6.5% copper. <laughs> I said, this is low grade. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, it's low grade. And uh, we're looking for a home for it. Uh, the smelters can't take it. Uh, there's no sulfur in it because the smelters need sulfur as an energy unit. So it's all oxide. I said, oh, sure, you know, we can do it. Uh, and so we're invited actually this month to meet with the people in the DRC. And I said, it's kind of premature. But, you know, if you send us samples, we'll test it for you at, at SGS in Quebec. And, of course, SGS is working with Investment Quebec. So Investment Quebec says, you know, Frank, uh, if you build your plant here with the reach walk process, we can give you half a billion dollars. I said, well, we don't even know what we have yet. Uh, but they gave us a piece of land, which is next to the port. Uh, and so you can bring material in by ship and it's next to the rail. And they also allocated power. So basically, you know, Frank, uh, let's move this along. We're interested in financing this. And uh, we're interested in supplying, you know, you know, this product to the battery plants in Ontario and Quebec. Uh, so we got an equal offer like that from Germany. You know, we were in Switzerland and Germany just recently. And they said, oh, yeah, you know, we'll get you money from European Union. We're very much interested. Can you, can you do something here? I said, sure, but let's see what, what we have first in terms of what he's been offered for. So we've been offered quite a bit of feed, and it was surprising. Uh, it comes from the DRC. Uh, it was also offered to us by Turkish people that we found out actually material from the DRC. So there's a lot of material in the DRC that's available as oxide. And it's an uh, old stockpile material that's been put there probably for decades, if not centuries, and there's huge quantities. It's just massive quantities. So we, we kind of indicated that we're interested. We'll test it for them. And if there's something to be done, we'll toll it. We're not going to buy it. Uh, tolling is kind of a risk-free way of making product. Buying it is a very high risk because fluctuations in the price of nickel and copper and cobalt are quite large. And even the majors don't buy. And, you know, we've been supplying product to a lot of these uh, smelters. They toll it for you. So we'll do the same thing. We're tolling. Uh, very much interested to do something like that. Get back to them. Very, very nice to us. Very, very supportive. So hopefully, you know, something can be done in Quebec or something can be done in Germany. So we might be having a, a leach plant before we even have a, our old Graal mine going into production. Well, yeah, uh, well, I was just going to ask, because if it's in Quebec, uh, it's, and you talked about this tolling, it's come almost like outsourced processing. And the advantage is you've got Quebec and you've got cheap electricity. Is it close to uh, what you have in Saguenay? Well, uh, uh, when you mean for product to come in? Yeah, it, it actually the the plant site uh, for the leach plant is at the port. Actually, it's amazing how they got this property for us. Oh, I'm wow. not sure. go ahead, go ahead, Pat. 
Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's a great advantage to have it right there at the port. Yeah, it's right at the port. Has rail as well, and they've allocated power for us. Yeah, and the thing is, it, it doesn't make any sense to build a leach plant next to our property in Grawl. It, it's not far from port, but you know, you build it next to port, produce product, and then either ship it to North America or or, or end users here, or go to Europe. I don't think we can compete with the Asian market. That's kind of dominated by the Chinese. And they have a pretty good model there. So trying to go against that, it's very, very hard to beat. What so, is, yeah. Frank, the uh, timeline like? If you're heading off to the DRC to take a look at these things, how soon can you get this whole operation up and running if and when you did it? Uh, I, I think the biggest challenge, really, a lot of this stuff, Todd, is, uh, and then it cascades. It really gets out of control very quickly, and they want it now. Now, my understanding is the battery plants need product now. I think in the interim, uh, it might be coming from Asia. To, to meet their demands. Uh, uh, it's depending, basically, uh, they want the product to be shipped now. They, they, the people from the DRC, like we met them actually at PDAC, the people from the DRC, we, we had them for dinner uh, in Toronto, and then they moved it up. You look at our news release, like, it's not like we're meeting a, uh, a simple person, it's the governor, <laughs> you know? And they want us to be there. And says, we'd like you to meet, and we, we're actually go, going in with a group of people it's actually a group of Americans who are also part of the equation, and everybody wants to get this feed. Everybody wants this product. And, uh, you know, if everybody works together, we can achieve these objectives in a relatively short time frame. Build a plant, maybe two years, you know. Yeah. So everything's possible, but the feed is available now. In other words, they'll ship the feed now, and I can have it in port in a few weeks. It's wow. unbelievable how quickly they want to move, eh? But at the, uh, it all hinges on, obviously, you're getting great cooperation with Quebec, but you also have a process. I'm probably going to say this wrong. I think it's called RE20X process, or or is it? And and is it a big advantage? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's called RE2X. It's, uh, okay. it's a very simple, uh, what I call it, it's, it's uh, high sophistication, low tech. Uh, the plant, the, the process was designed intentionally to be put anywhere in the world. And basically, you take any operator with three to six months operated. And of course, the technical people can monitor this with a laptop anywhere in the world. It's a very, very simple process, uh, very, very easy to operate. And it's designed to be put in operation in places where uh, power is not dependable. So in other words, sometimes you try to shut down a plant uh, unintentionally. It can take weeks and months to restart. This one, you can shut it down. And you know, the minute the power comes up, you just start it up again and it runs. It's like a very, very uh, forgiving uh, circuit. Uh, so the Retox plant, uh, uh, the tube actually means there's two stages to the plant. The first stage is actually battery metals. The second stage is precious metals. So it can take precious metals. So uh, we spent six years of opening this process, spent $8 million. It went from bench scale to pile plants and plant trials. And at that time, we produced actually a, a, a copper uh, cobalt nickel hydroxide cake because the end user wanted a copper cobalt nickel hydroxide cake. But we also use this process to actually produce cobalt sulfate for Somito in Japan on spec. So it's not enough just to produce cobalt uh, in the cobalt sulfate on spec, but you have to make sure the impurities meet their criteria. So the purer the material is, the better quality battery gets built. So it, there's a lot of things in this thing, but it's a very elemental, what we call high sophistication process made to operate anywhere in the world. Frank, you got a lot of exciting news and, and a lot of moving parts. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Well, thanks a lot, Pat. And always a pleasure to talk to you. Have okay. a wonderful day.